for Tom O'Brien. I will be with you throughout the week. Let's take a look at what's going on in the market. We have the ES about 1.16 points, excuse me, 1.17 percent up. The Russell of about 1.69 percent. NQs of about 1.33 percent. The YM up about 1 percent. And so we had gold uh, really shoot up today on significant volume. So the dollar, uh, now we're down a little bit from that kind of run up we've had. We were sitting around 107.30 until we came back down. The dollar also saw a bump up uh, earlier today. Uh, you know, the metals, stock market, and the dollar um, are, you know, these are inversely related with each other. But um, we see some weakening signs in the dollar, which is uh, positive for the metal market and the stock market as a whole. Copper futures kind of flat right now. Light Swede crude down a little bit. Now, we'll talk a little bit about that. It did shoot up um, over some concerns about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, that's occurring. Uh, we might see that pull back in just a little bit. The Brent crude down about the same as well. Tesla up 1.37%. We'll talk a bit about them. Uh, they're looking at some of their quarterlies after releasing the Cybertruck. And some analysts aren't entirely sold on it. Steel Dynamics, we're back in that trading range, about 105. Um, see, we really saw it break this consolidation, which usually would be a bearish kind of signal. But it did come back up and shot all the way back up to 110. And uh, we're now floating at 105. So I'm keeping my eye on this um, to kind of see what will happen. I'd like to see some more volume action, uh, rejecting really the 100 area. Um, we might see a traversal back down to a sub 100 a little while. QQQ up 1.32%, Google up 1.53, Meta up 2.14%, Disney coming back a little bit, I say that a little bit, at $85. Um, we're still down um, pretty significantly from its highs. Apple kind of sideways, iPhone 15 sales were not so good in China as they had been in editions prior. Of course, the SPY trading about 4.36.47. We have some news with Lulu Lemon. They're shooting up significantly, as you can see with the volume, up to about 4.20. You're trading at 4.18, uh, 275 right now. So they're planning on joining the S&P 500. Um, so people really want to get in on this. Uh, Vancouver Canada-based company stock was up over 10% at 4.15.55 earlier in the session. Uh, Lululemon has had a strong year despite weakness in the overall apparel industry. I remember when Nike was getting kicked pretty heavily, uh, Lululemon was um, pretty strong. And this has been a strong company for quite a while. Uh, the prices are uh, relatively high, uh, but the quality is very good. And uh, they're, they're just dominant in kind of the Athletica uh, industry. Its second quarter results came in better than Wall Street expectations. The net revenue increased about 18% year over year. Late September, Lululemon said it had entered a five-year partnership uh, with the connected with the fitness platform Peloton for its content. Uh, Lululemon will become the primary athletic apparel provider for Peloton, uh, while some Peloton instructors will be Lululemon ambassadors. The company said it also uh, plans to stop selling its connected fitness mirror device, which it purchased for $500 million in June 2020 when valuations uh, for at-home fitness equipment like Peloton and Tonals were skyrocketing uh, due to everyone being inside because of COVID. Uh, Yahoo Finance executive editor uh, points out that Lululemon unsuccessfully attempted to integrate the mirror acquisition, but the positive thing about this is that when something doesn't work, they cut it out and the stock always tends to blow up. Um, and that, we see that happen a lot with Meta as well. When they've invested heavily in it, um, if they cut something that's failing, people just tend to love it and want their, put their money somewhere. Um, obviously, this is a pre pretty significant jump. Uh, they gapped up very high. Um, and this is on a yearly here. So, I mean, it gapped way above its yearly high of 4.07. Um, beginning of the year, probably trading about 28, uh, excuse me, $286.57. Uh, so keep your eye out on it. Uh, I really would not get in at this level just because you had such a stark amount of volume at the top. We might see some kind of sell-off. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll be trading some new bounds here uh, with that. 
On some crypto news, uh, Tether has been uh, has frozen some crypto wallets. And this is like the scary thing, right? If you're like a crypto guy and the concept is you get this and it's kind of away from regulatory uh, bodies. Um, you can do with your money what you want and, you know, there's, there's more freedom to it. Well, we're seeing now with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, and certainly with the conflict uh, between Russia and Ukraine uh, that there have been some wallets that have been frozen um, that have been linked to terrorism and warfare, as it said. A second for this to not lag. There we go. So Tether has frozen 32 virtual wallets linked to crypto-funded terrorism and warfare in Israel and Ukraine. And what I want to say, too, all right, I say this is bad news. Like, it's not bad news, right? It's good that these companies can, like, figure out which entities are, you know, supporting violence throughout the world and freeze these, right? It's just I think what it does is it underlines again um, – kind of the inaccuracy of thinking that cryptocurrency is going to be um, some new liberation uh, regarding finance. Um, everything's always going to kind of get back to what it was. And what I mean by that is the regulatory bodies we have now regarding money are the, you know, the result of many years of people taking advantage of certain systems or doing things incorrectly. And so new laws always get put on top and new regulations always get put on top. And we're going to see that happening um, with cryptocurrency as well. And I think these larger companies, um, obviously Tether is just the, the foundation that um, s supports the kind of algorithm for this coin. But, you know, you look at things um, like all the different wallets that exist in the different kind of exchanges, um, both of these guys are going to, or both of these entities are going to have to work together to kind of police um, what the people who are using their programs are doing. And that's going to allow these companies to kind of exist further, right? You know, if you're having a cryptocurrency that exists and it, it is being used for things like terrorism or kind of illicit activities and the people who are in charge of the algorithm uh, don't do anything about it, um, you're going to get governments coming for you essentially, right? And they're going to shut down your business and seize all your stuff. So this has to be kind of done uh, in, in order to maintain longevity of the program. Um, when we get back, we'll talk a little bit more about that. We have Steve Rhodes as well, which is great. If you have a question, you can talk to me in the den. If you're not in it, you should get in it. TFNN.com under services, we have it there. Or you can email me at jacob at TFNN.com. We will be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday